These are the eight books I read and finished in March. The novelization of Labyrinth, Jim Henson's The Classic, and this is written by A.C.H. Smith. This is fantasy, and the reason why I wore this shirt today. None of This is True by Lisa Jewell. This is a thriller. Kill for Me, Kill for You by Steve Cavanaugh. This is a thriller. Oh, really? Uh, did you want to help me? Were you gonna let them all know the title of the book and the author and the genre? Oh, no, you're just gonna be cute? Please hold. <laughs> anyway, A History of Fear by Luke Dumas, and this is a horror. Blacktop Wasteland by S.A. Cosby, this is a crime thriller. Upgrade by Blake Crouch, this is a sci-fi thriller. Light from Uncommon Stars, this is a literary sci-fi by Rika Aoki. And House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland, and this is a horror. So I am going to say a quote from one of these books, and you all can guess what book you think it's from, and at the end of the video I will let you know if you're right. I am not like you. You must understand by now that you are different. Why are you so beautiful, do you think? So hungry. So able to bend the wills of those around you. You are like the death flowers that grow rampant in your wake. Lovely to look at, intoxicating even. But get too close and you will soon learn that there is something rank beneath. That's what beauty often is in nature. A warning. A disguise. So what book do you think that's from? House of Hollow, Light from Uncommon Stars, Upgrade, Blacktop Wasteland, A History of Fear, Kill for Me, Kill for You, None of This is True, or Labyrinth. So like I said, I read eight books totaling 2,542 pages. That's not counting partial reads. I had one book that I read the bulk of, but I didn't finish it till April. So I'm going to push it for my April wrap up. And I also listened to an audiobook, but I didn't finish it. We'll get to that in a moment. So my average pages a day is about 82. Again, that's not counting partial reads. If I count partial reads, then that would be about 100 pages a day. The genres I read were horror, sci-fi, thriller, and fantasy, and the range of my ratings is three and a half to four and a half stars. So first up with the partial reads, we'll just get these out of the way real quick. I reread Bunny by Mona Awad, and this is a satirical literary fiction with honestly a little bit of horror elements and a little bit of fantasy elements too, I would think. And I reread this for the Bunny-a-thon that was hosted by Mary over at Books with Tofocado in Brooklyn over at Brooklyn's Library. And I did read the bulk of this in March. However, I didn't finish it till April and I'm reading other books for that readathon, and I kind of want to keep those grouped together. So I will review all the books that I read for the Bunny-a-thon in April's wrap-up. And the other partial read. <laughs> this was my audiobook read for the month. Usually I read one to two audiobooks a month in addition to my physical reads. I don't read audiobooks because I read faster that way. I just read more because I can read a lot faster with my eyeballs. I read about two to three times faster with my eyeballs. Also, I have a better time paying attention. I can comprehend it better, retain it better. I can go back and reread things. I can annotate. It just works a lot better for me but I can get more read if I listen to an audiobook while I'm walking, driving, the slow hours at work, doing stuff around the house, stuff like that. So I had a physical copy of this and typically I like to listen to an audiobook that I have a physical copy of the book, that way I can follow along. So The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. This is the prequel to the Hunger Games trilogy, which I read, I think, in 2022, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I really should have looked that up before I started filming. But anyway, I read that some time ago. This is a little over 500 pages and I'm about on page 268. I would have been a lot farther, but I've had to go back and re-listen several times because I just could not pay attention. It's like, no matter what I was doing, I was just like, I had to go back and re-listen and re-listen and re-listen so many chapters because honestly, this is so boring. Oh my god. Look, I get that it's the history of the Hunger Games and how that all came to be, but I just don't care about any of the characters. I don't care what's going- there's like nothing going on. I mean, okay, there's stuff that happens, but nothing that I really cared about. Nothing that was like- excuse you. It is nothing like 
the trilogy. So if you're wanting that like action aspect from the Hunger Games, this is not it. So hopefully I will finish this in April. I almost want to DNF it, but I mean, I wish I have it. I want to finish the series. I might as well, you know, it's an audiobook and I got the free audiobook on Hoopla. So it's not like I spent a credit on it, which I am grateful for. So as per usual, I'm going to go in order from my least favorite to most favorite, but honestly, it was really hard to rank these because I really enjoyed all of these and they're pretty close in rating. Like there's no real losers and not any huge winners. I mean, I would have a favorite book of the month, but I wouldn't say that it's like a favorite of all time, I guess, if you get what I mean. So anyway, the first book I'm going to talk about is the novelization of the movie Labyrinth. This is not because I liked it the least. It's rather in this spot because it was originally a movie and not a book. Although I would recommend this, especially this edition right here, because it includes the illustrations by Brian Froud. In the back here, you'll get a bunch of illustrations by him. And there's also notes from when they made the movie. So this was a lot of fun to read. I have not seen the movie in so long, but I love a good labyrinth story. I love portal fantasy, and that is exactly what this is. And it is very reminiscent of Alice in Wonderland. It even has the elements of nonsensical things happening and riddles kind of being played into the story. So this was a lot of fun. If you love the movie Labyrinth and you have not read this, I highly recommend it. Definitely go read it. Next up, we have None of This is True by Lisa Jewell. This is a thriller and I have read three books by her before this. I read The Family Upstairs a couple years ago for a book club. I didn't really like it. I ended up unhauling it and then I listened to Then She Was Gone and... I don't remember anything about that book. And I just picked up a mass market paperback on a whim at the grocery store of The Girls in the Garden and that one actually creeped me out. And I never hear anybody talking about that book. So if you've read Lisa Jewell and you haven't read that one, I would recommend that one. Uh, this one was pretty enjoyable. This is about two birthday twins. So we are following this main character who is celebrating her birthday at a restaurant with her husband and she finds that there's another lady at a couple tables over who is also celebrating her birthday. She ends up talking to her in the bathroom. She finds out they have the same exact birthday and so she kind of weasels her way into this lady's podcast because she basically looks stuff up about this other lady that she saw there, her birthday twin, she was like, oh, she does a podcast. Oh, awesome. And so she weasels her way into the podcaster doing this whole series about her. And she definitely has her own reasons for doing that. Um, there is something in this book that I don't hear people mentioning. Now, whether this is something that actually happens or not, this is something that is mentioned quite a bit in the book and it has to do with grooming, like an older man grooming a younger girl. So if you're sensitive to something like that, maybe avoid this one. It doesn't get into details or anything like that. I don't want to give any spoilers, but it is something that's talked about. But there are a few quotes in here that I'd like to share with you that I thought were pretty cool. <laughs> and especially being the age that I am, I could relate to these ones. She finds it hard to believe. Once she'd been young and she thought 45 would come slow and impossible. She thought 45 would be another world, but it came fast and it's not what she thought it would be. A life lived in fast forward and now apparently she should peak and crest and then come slowly, contentedly down the other side. But it doesn't feel as if there ever was a peak, rather an abyss formed of trauma that she keeps circling and circling with a knot of dread in the pit of her stomach. But that girl, that girl is starting to feel like a shapeshifter, a fraud, a one-dimensional paper doll. She's blurring in her mind's eye into a human puddle. Now Lisa Jewell definitely keeps the suspense going throughout the book. It is a propulsive read. You always want to find out what is going on with this character. She is so weird, bizarre, and it's a very easy read, a fast read. If you like Lisa Jewell and you haven't read this yet, I would recommend it. Oh, by the way, I give this three and a half stars. 
And my next three and a half star is Kill For Me, Kill For You by Steve Cavanaugh. And this is a thriller. And this is a Strangers on a Train retelling. I think it might have originally been a book turned into a movie, but I know there's definitely a movie. And that is literally referenced in this book. And so we have two strangers who meet and they both have ideas for revenge and they figure, hey, we could help each other. Instead of us killing our own people that we want to kill, let's each kill for each other. And so they work out a deal. Well, things don't go exactly as planned. Now there are a few twists in this and there's a couple major ones that I actually saw coming. <laughs> the first, it, rather it has to do with the identity of a couple people. I knew who those people were. I'm gonna have to talk about this very generally so I don't give spoilers. But the first character, I knew immediately who that person was, but the way the author writes things, he almost gaslights you because there was something that happened in the book and I'm like, oh, I guess that can't be that person. Well, that's weird. And then it gets revealed later on that, oh no, I was right the first time. And I literally had to go back several pages, chapters to, to like verify something. So I'm like, wait, that's what I thought in the first place. But how is that possible? Because this one thing happened and I go back, I'm like, oh, you sneaky, sneaky. Mm, I see what you did there. And then the second character's identity, I knew right away. And I even had an idea on how that character was getting away with this different identity. It was like the first thing I thought of. I'm like, oh, I wonder if it's this. And yeah, that turned out to be true. So I did see a couple of the big reveals there's still another thing that I didn't quite see coming that was a little shocking. So it was still fun overall, but this was a very fast read, propulsive. I think I read it in a couple days. So if you want a quick, fun thriller, definitely recommend. I gave it three and a half stars. And my first four star is A History of Fear by Luke DeMoss, and this is a horror. And in this book, we follow someone who has killed someone, but he claims the devil made him do it. So it's not really his fault, right? Well, oh, I do give this four stars with a caveat because there's a little bit of politics in here that I didn't really appreciate. But other than that, this was pretty clever. I did catch on to something early on. It has to do with someone's name and I saw a connection immediately. And then on the last page, it was confirmed that that was correct. So I thought that was pretty cool. But this is definitely dark, definitely has some dark things in it, absolutely. Uh, not just having to do with the devil, but I'll say adult things happening. So basically we have the killer who is now in jail. So this book is written as if the editor is writing the book because the killer was in jail and he decided he had to write a book about his experience. And so this is like the editor's comments on that book. I know it sounds kind of confusing, but it was a really interesting way to do it. And it was definitely a little slow build at first. It seems very atmospheric, like an eerie and like unsettling. Like you always feel like something is about to happen and you're suspicious of everybody. And it reminds me a little bit of Dracula. Not that it has anything to do with vampires, but just, I don't know, the overall vibes, it just, it reminded me of Dracula. Maybe also because Dracula is epistolary and is written in letters, maybe that has also something to do with it. Overall, I enjoyed it and I read it pretty fast as well. If you like a slow burn, creepy horror story and you're okay with a little bit of dark content, I do recommend it. My next four star rating goes to Blacktop Wasteland by S.A. Cosby. This is a crime thriller and this is set in the South. I believe it's Virginia. And we have a father who is a morally gray character and he really wants to do everything he can to support his family. And he definitely has some struggles, some challenges, and he ends up getting mixed in with some dangerous criminals. 
and he has to basically pull off a heist and it's more risky than usual. This was a lot of fun. It is a super fast read. I probably read it in a couple days. It read to me like a Quentin Tarantino movie, so if you're a fan of Tarantino and you haven't read this, definitely recommend it. The only, <laughs> the only thing I have to say about it is it is very heavy on the similes. The metaphors, I mean, I didn't count exactly, but there has to be at least one to three metaphors on every page. Yes, I'm not exaggerating. It was a lot. Now look, I know it's set in the South and they tend to have their sayings and all that, but it was a lot. It was so much that it was a little distracting every time I'd be like, oh, there's another one. Oh, there's another one. I mean, sometimes one right after the other. And I saw in a review online that somebody else made that comment and also about his other book, Razor Blade Tears, which I have been interested in, but they said the same thing, that there's a lot of similes in that book. So I don't know if it's just because it's a southern thing or if that's just like a literary device that he relies on just something to keep in mind i guess but this one's a lot of fun and if you want a fast-paced thriller this one i definitely recommend first four and a half star rating goes to upgrade by blake crouch y'all know i love a blake crouch book and this is no exception and in this we follow a man who has a sister and they have some weird family history with their mother. Their mother ended up creating this thing that upgraded the genetic code of humans. And so it has a lot of talk about, you know, just because we can do something, does that mean that we should? Because in doing that, there's a lot of ramifications to that. And especially when you're dealing with genetic code, things get changed for generations and it will get to a point where it's too late, you can't do anything about it. So our main character here discovers that he has unintentionally received this upgrade. And so he gets these almost superhuman powers. Basically, whoever gets this upgrade, it, it strengthens whatever strengths you already had. It basically puts everything at a super fast speed. It's almost like his brain becomes like a quantum computer or something. And there's also a lot of action in this because people are after him and he's trying to get away. He's got his own plans and what he wants to do. So again, another fast paced thriller by Blake Crouch, one that has some really thought provoking concepts. And again, if you haven't read Blake Crouch, another one I would recommend. My next four and a half star is Light from Uncommon Stars by Rika Ayoki. It's either Rika or Rika. I looked it up and now I forgot. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. That's a cool name though. But this is a more literary sci-fi and this has donuts and demons and aliens and it has good representation for different identities. It has talk about immigrants. There's a lot of discussion surrounding music, in particular classical music, and even more specifically violins. So in this, we have a couple violinists who are referenced. We have Paganini, who was considered the devil's violinist. And that's because he had almost like this superhuman talent so i did listen to his violin music while i was reading this and then when we get towards the end there's another violinist that's mentioned a song in particular and so once i got to that part i played that music i will go ahead and link both of those videos down below in the description so that way if you read this book you can also listen to that in the background while you read bits of this reminded me of the invisible life of Addie larue because there is a queen of hell character in this and there are deals being made and souls being sold it also reminds me a little bit of sign here in that way i haven't read that one yet but from what i know of the premise it does sound similar also the writing or the storytelling reminded me a little bit of a spear cuts through water not to the same level like the multi-layered storytelling that a spear cuts through water is but it reminded me of that. So I would say if you read that book and liked it and you like sci-fi, I would definitely recommend this. So this has Faustian bargains, it has space travelers traveling through the galaxy, we have holograms, 
and a big part of this book has to do with acceptance which is acceptance of yourself as well as others because sometimes other people may not accept you but sometimes the hardest person to accept you is yourself so i found that to be a common theme throughout this book so if you like a little literary sci-fi with some queer rep demons a lot of talk about a donut shop alien space travelers violin music beautiful writing absolutely recommend so my next four and a half star rating the last book i have to talk about my favorite book of the month was house of hollow by crystal sutherland and this is a horror and this does have elements of body horror and my god does everything smell disgusting in this book don't eat while you're reading this i mean unless you like the smell of carcasses so in this we follow three pretty weird sisters and they have a mysterious history and there's something that had happened in the past and they are not really even sure themselves what happened and they have a really strange relationship with their mother there's a pretty big mystery element in this especially regarding one of the sisters in particular and there's this creepy creature like a minotaur kind of creature that is basically stalking them throughout the book there is a little bit of portal fantasy in this this is like a dark fairy tale there's some pretty gruesome things that happen in this book especially towards the end but if you like things with bugs and fungi and flowers that smell like carrion and you like a good fairy tale with maybe some labyrinth and minotaur vibes, highly recommend. Did you guess it right? Do you know what book that quote came from? The quote that I said at the beginning of the video? The cover may have given you a little bit of a hint and that quote was from House of Hollow. So these are all the books I read and finished in March. Have you read any of these? What did you think? Are any of these your favorites? Have you added any of these to your TBR or were you already planning on reading them? And if you'd like to leave an emoji to let me know you've made it this far into the video, go ahead and leave me any kind of flower emoji in honor of House of Hollow. And thank you all so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.